So we've been working through the different types of data visualizations depending on what information we want to convey, what type of measurement scales we have. So we looked at parts of a whole. So you want to show the makeup of something. If you have one variable or two variable, we created pie charts and donuts and sunbursts. We looked at comparisons. So you can compare the categories within a variable, a single question or field. You can compare uh, multiple questions or fields by creating things like waffle charts and spider radar plots and dot plots. We looked at graphs for when we have data and we looked at when the data is uh, discrete, stacked column charts, bump charts. We looked at when the time when the time is continuous. I don't know if I just said time before. When the time is discrete versus when the time is continuous. We then talked about how we're going to defer the location based ones until we get to different data sources and we'll look specifically at a spatial data and then we'll cover these in later videos. In our last video, we looked at variability distribution of the data and we looked at histograms and box plots and violin plots. We're also going to defer the visualizations of text because the next coming videos are going to be about data sources. And in addition to looking at a data source that is spatial, we're also going to look at data sources that are documents or text based. And so we'll look at those visualizations there. We have a couple other um, videos that will relate to data visualization that we'll defer to later. Oh, here we have flow based. So as we get into this last section, this last section is about association or relationships between variables. If we are looking at the flow of information, the flow of data, we have uh, network diagrams, sand key diagrams. We're going to hold off on doing those until we get uh, to more of the dashboards and the enterprise analytics. The other thing we're going to defer until later is the, the, the data visualizations that show process. So hi hierarchical or organizational charts, flow charts, uh, these are process-based data visualizations. We're also going to defer those until we get to more enterprise analytics. So what does that leave us with? We're going to look in this video about graphs that show association between variables. If we have two variables, two fields, two sets of questions, and the two questions are ratio or interval, we'll create scatter plots. And if we have more than two variables, then we can create what are called bubble charts. You see one more type of graph in this visualization here, the dendrogram. We're going to leave those until we do some cluster analysis in some upcoming videos. So in this video, we're going to look at scatter plots and bubble charts. All right, so let's dive into that. And just a reminder that you can find these workbooks at drstephpowers.github.io slash BIA. And we are looking at the data visualization workbook, open it in GitHub. Not only will you find the workbook, but you will also find the data sets we're using. So bargain numeric, CRM clean, and bargain clean are the ones we've been referencing in this particular Python notebook. So make sure you save those and put them into your Google Drive. Mount your Google Drive so you can then access your data sets. And we're using this method in case you want to do some analysis of your own data sets. All right, so let's dive in here. We're at the very end of this document. Let's look at how to create a scatter plot. So to create a scatter plot, we are going to import matplotlib.pyplot and call it plt. And then from Seaborn, we're going to import something called regplot. So there's different ways to make scatter plots. There's different packages that make scatter plots. We're going to look a couple of them uh, as we work through our videos because we'll need scatter plots when we do our forecasting and our regression models. So we're going to be doing a lot of scatter plots. All right, in this particular scatter plot called regplot, then the way that it works is you call the command regplot. We need to give it our data. So we're going to use DF3. This is the customer relationship management uh, database. And we're going to look at questions 7 and 10. So question 7. Was the talk to listening ratio for March, the percentage of time the salesperson is listening? So that is 7. 
and we are going to look at how that compares to question 10. So question 10 is the longest the customer talks uninterrupted. So how many seconds is their longest monologue? Is there a relationship between how long the customers talk uh, uninterrupted and the percentage of time that our salesperson listens? We would think they would be highly correlated, right? So we're looking at association when we look at uh, our scatter plot. So we're going to make X, that's what's on the horizontal here. We're gonna make that the question seven and we're gonna drop any empty values. And then we're going to take question Y, or sorry, we're gonna take question 10, the monologue, and we're gonna make it on the Y axis. So Y equals DF3 dot drop the NAs, question 10. And we're going to plot it so that the X axis sales salesperson, the Y axis has the label customer monologue, and we will graph here. Okay. What this does with this reg plot is it does a line of best fit, and then it has this little shaded area here to show uh, what is in, in terms of the, the most, so within a standard deviation of, the, of that line of best fit. So it's trying to identify what's an outlier, what's an extreme, and then what is near here. So what we can see here is that based on this line of best fit, as the salesperson listens more, of course, the customer monologue gets longer. So not only is the salesperson listening, but the customer is now talking uninterrupted for longer periods of time. And so these ones that are out here outside of the shaded area are the more extreme values. Now, if we do this, if we remove these drop NAs, So we can plot this information here, whether there is uh, missing information or not. And that's important with our scatter plots is that scatter plots should allow for, um, for graphing, even if information is missing. So you shouldn't need those drop NAs there. Now that's not the only way to create a scatter plot. You can also create a scatter plot with matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. And so here we're going to use plt.plot. We are going to graph here the same information. Shouldn't need these drop NAs here. We're going to do line style equals none, marker equals a dot. We're going to label the X axis salesperson. We're going to the Y customer monologue. And we'll graph our information here. Again, scatter plots don't need you to remove the NAs. Uh, they should be plotting without because it's simply an empty spot if there is um, if they don't have both pieces of information. Notice when we plot with matplotlib, we have no line of best fit. That's okay because the reg plot is only a linear relationship. And what we want to do later on as we fit a line, as we do regression and forecasting, is we may not want a linear relationship. Maybe it's exponential, maybe it's logarithmic. Uh, we want to be able to show those relationships and add a line of best fit. So we're gonna actually use this matplotlib.pyplot PLT plotting of our scatter plot quite more because we can overlay on top of it um, our regression model or our forecasting model. Okay, so we don't need to drop the NAs, we can do it just as it is and plot that data. One more graph, and that is a bubble chart. So whereas the scatter plot showed just two variables, customer monologue and salesperson listening, both ratio or interval, the bubble plot allows for a third variable. So with a bubble plot here, we're using question seven, question eight, and question 10 from that customer relationship management system. Question seven was the percentage of listening, question eight is average talking speed, and question 10 was the longest customer monologue. So now we have three variables here, both interval or ratio. We need to import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT, and from Seaborn, we're gonna import scatterplot. So we're using both of those. So we're going to create a scatterplot using Seaborn. There's lots of ways to create a scatterplot. So we've already just covered three of them. <laughs> uh, so here we're gonna pull the database, DF3, 
Our x-axis is going to be question 7, the listening percentage. We're going to have on the y-axis question 8, the talking speed. And then our size of our bubbles is going to be question 10. So remember question 10 was the longest customer monologue. So this allows us to see if there's a relationship between the three variables by not only looking at is there some kind of correlation. So when listening percentage goes up, does talking percentage, talking speed go up? But is there also a grouping in terms of the bubble size, right? Are the small bubbles in one location or the big bubbles in another? When we look at this particular data set, this graph is a bit of a mess and doesn't tell us a whole lot. It looks like there's not really a whole lot of relationship between these three variables because it looks a bit like a random scatter. What we do see is a bit of a congregation here in the center saying that, okay, well, most people have a similar listening speed, a similar talking speed, and the bubbles are all about the same size. So it seems like everyone seems to have quite a similar um, monologue as well. There is this one here. This one is a very long customer monologue. It's a real big bubble. And notice it happens at a higher listening percentage. It also seems to happen at a higher talking speed. So maybe that salesperson is is getting in more listening per minute by simply talking a lot faster. Uh, we could kind of look for if there's a trend here, listening percentage and talking speed, but there's this whole group up here uh, that maybe suggests that there's not a strong association. When we have a bunch of data like this, talking speed, listening speed, and length of monologue, we can do things like cluster analysis to help us see if there's cohorts of customer salesperson relationships that can be kind of flagged as groups. So maybe this is a group, maybe this is another group, uh, just to help to better understand what it looks like in this graph, like a bunch of randomness. Maybe there is uh, more information here. The cluster analysis methods can help us seek out. So in future videos, we'll do some cluster analysis and we'll see if we can identify cohorts or groups of events or individuals as we look at multiple variables and here ratio and interval.